Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another reading for you guys. For those of you guys that are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft is what I do. Now, as you guys know, for those of you guys that have been following me for a while, we dabble in everything, right? <laughs> and I wanted to do a reading specifically. I was, I've been working with a lot of cleansings for a lot of clients because we are in the end of the year, you guys know it's the busiest season for all, for us, especially in the practice. And everyone wants to start off the year amazing, right? So for some reason, I was very pulled towards looking at every single sign and seeing exactly what it is that needs to take place for you to remove any blockages that you're experiencing. So we are going to go to the cards specifically for that. So this reading is going to be to see what magical necessity or need is taking place in your life to be able to remove blockages and to be able to go into the new year doing amazing. So we're going to start off with Aries all the way to Pisces. If you guys enjoy these readings, like, share, and comment. And for those of you guys new, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can help us with the algorithm. All right, my lovelies, let's get to the needy greedy. We're going to dive into different type of reading. I'm going to be reading the energy of the blockage that is being shown to me uh, for every single zodiac sign to see what it is that we need to do to better our path, to clear our path, I should say. So let's get into it. We're beginning here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow me to open up as a vessel of communication. Let it be you who speaks through me. Allow me to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly for every single zodiac sign from beginning to uh, beginning with Aries all the way to Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Clear a <clears throat> clear and communicate. Clear picture with the vivid imagery in regards to the blockages that need to be removed. Give us guidance for every single sign. All right, here we go. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Okay. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay. Thank you. All right. So what they're showing me here, Aries, is going through a cycle uh, right now where there is a lot of wanting to move quickly and almost feeling like you are moving forward. You take two steps forward and 10 steps backwards. There is almost this feeling of stagnation. Now, they are showing me that uh, part of it has a lot to do with a karmic cycle that you're currently going through or that you're currently experiencing um, in every aspect of your life. So this could be love. This could be finances. This could be career. Uh, there is definitely a karmic cycle here uh, that is being restored or that is coming to balance. Now, let's see what it is that needs to be done to be able to propel you into the future to the best of your interest. All right, here we go. All right, so what they're showing me here, Aries, is the need to be courageous, the need to do things that perhaps you haven't done or uh, letting go of the fear of Failure is one of the things that's coming through very strongly for you. I would highly encourage you guys to do a uh, cutting of cords. Uh, you can find that on my YouTube channel. Um, this is going to help you. This is going to open the path to uh, less resistance. And again, it's going to help you cut ties uh, with people that you're still emotionally connected or emotionally invested in that has uh, kept you in this energy of stagnation. For some of you guys, it could be uh, relationships, a karmic uh, cycle, something that you experience where there is still a connection there. For some of you guys, this could be children that are involved, or it could be um, the mother or father of your child, that there is still uh, 
karmatically or uh, vibrationally still connection there. And for some of you guys, it could even feel like, uh, as an example, in regards to love and romance, you can't really move forward or not much has changed. Or uh, like they're still having a hold or some type of, you know, empowerment over you. Um, and what they're telling you here is basically having the need to cut those ties. So cutting, of course, is something that is definitely going to open the path for you uh, in regards to the situation. What is the message that you want to communicate for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? The message that you want to communicate in regards to the situation. Yeah, like I said, cutting of cords is something that's coming through very strongly for some of you guys. For others of you, um, emotional, uh, emotionally wise, I would definitely encourage you guys to do uh, some type of healing using water or the element of water. Uh, this could be, as an example, running your bath and being able to introduce some type of uh, some rue, um, some type of uh, mint or spearmint um, that will help you, that will help you clear the path. Uh, bay leaves as well. Okay. The message, here we go. And we have number four, which is uh, family. This is uh, family, the connection of family, the home, uh, privacy, housing situation, building, uh, the base, uh, heritage. Like I said, uh, this is directly connected to a family dynamic or a relationship where there was children involved or where there are children involved. For some of you guys, um, specifically, I'm being shown um, if you are, uh, as an example, still living in a home that in some shape, way, or form is connected to an ex, you have to either find a way of clearing that energy. My advice would be to do a home cleansing, a house cleansing, if you are unable to remove yourself from that. Um, if you are able to, like as an example, if you've been thinking of selling or you've been thinking of moving, now is the time to do so. They are giving you the green light. A lot of the times um, we can grow attachments to material things. And uh, as an example, you can go to a specific uh, building, a specific uh, somewhere where you're living. And if you see that it it is constant struggle or constant strife, you would you know, I would encourage you to do a cleansing. A lot of the times it's the stagnant energy that is there. But if you've done that and there's still stagnation and there's still difficulty, or as an example, you can, uh, you just don't seem to be able to draw in love. You're not able to draw in stability when it comes to finances, whatever. A lot of the times certain locations are not necessarily good for us. Um, and this could be a multitude of reasons for it. But a lot of the times, and I see this specifically in readings with clients, sometimes I tell them, hey, you're not going to find the person that you're looking for in the location you're in. Um, so again, if you are living in the home where you were married or you're living in the home of where your partner was, or if you're still living with them, but you guys are separated or no longer together, it's time to move out or it's time to find a new pathway for you because that's what's blocking you as well. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus here. Give us clarity in regards to Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Allow me to see clearly and concisely what their blockage is, as well as um, what needs to be done in order to remove that blockage for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Give us clarity, insight, speak to us, reveal to us. All right, here we go, Taurus. All right, so what I'm seeing here is for a lot of you, Taurus, you're going through uh, this cycle where maybe you find yourself revisiting certain situations or going to locations that perhaps have something to do with childhood, uh, with the family dy dynamic where you grew up, uh, that type of thing, or reminiscing a lot about that. And right now, there's like this cycle that you're going into where you have been healing, but a lot of the healing that you primarily need to focus on right now 
it is the fear of giving yourself or of being able to open up romantically. I feel like there's been this uh, feeling of stagnation for some of you guys. You haven't dated in quite a while for others of you. Um, you may find yourself dating the almost like the same person except in a different body. And what they're saying is that there is a recurring theme here connected to that that has a lot to do with the past has a lot to do with what you've programmed yourself to believe that you deserve. So what I mean by that is a lot of the times when we have a tendency of attracting um, a certain archetype, right? A certain type of personality or a certain type of uh, individual, um, because it's recurring, because it's constant, on a subconscious level, we start to believe that that is what we deserve or that is what's the best that we can attract. Um, but it is the the illumination of it or the understanding that you've outgrown that energy and being able to uh, open yourself up. I'm not saying go out there and open up to anyone. What I'm saying is to being more, uh, more aware of the people that you decide to let in or the people that you decide to open up to. Uh, understanding that it is or that they should be better quality than the people that you've dealt with in the past. There is something that in the past, there is something that in childhood, for some of you guys, maybe it's the way you were taught what love was, right? A lot of the times when uh, we grow up in a dynamic where uh, what is closest to us of recognizing love is how we're treated or how we're raised, how our parents love us or lack of love um, is what you connect. Um, it is what you experience first and foremost that you would recognize that in a partner. If they treat you, um, as an example, if they treat you or have a tendency of treating you the way you felt when you were in childhood, Though it may seem distorted, though it may seem, of course, we're talking about not the better version. Um, it may seem, uh, like I said, distorted to believe, um, but sometimes we grow so accustomed to being mistreated or not appreciated enough that we are okay with that and we settle with that. And what they're telling you here is that there is healing that needs to happen in your heart chakra. There is healing that needs to happen in regards to releasing something from the past that either highly triggered you, highly hurt you for some of you guys. Um, and I feel like you've been working towards this. You've been working towards healing certain aspects of yourself, Taurus. But what they're saying here is it is crucial and very important to no longer drag things that we experience in the past into our present or into our future. And I know that's easier said than done. Um, again, when we have a heart chakra blocked, oftentimes um, it even feels like we don't really attract people towards us or like people don't necessarily um, are very welcoming in our energy. And the reason for it is because you're giving off this vibration that you yourself may not even be aware of. So what they're telling you is that there is healing that needs to happen here. And again, not necessarily if you're not looking for love, that's fine. But what they're telling you is having a heart chakra blocked uh, keeps us from being inspired. It keeps us from being motivated. It keeps us from growth in itself. So again, you have to work towards that. And the easiest route to do that is through writing. So for some of you guys, um, maybe you have a nick for writing. Maybe you enjoy writing. Maybe it's something that you've done maybe in childhood. You were good at writing stories or good at writing something as a form of expressing what you're going through or what you've experienced. And what they're telling you is that using that as an example, journaling is something that could be extremely healing for you that can help you uh, express all these emotions that you've been suppressing or that you've been holding uh, for many, many years. Um, and again, I feel like your creativity is being uh, hindered here and it could potentially be because of that. So working through, like I said, journaling, working through uh, any type of healing spell that would help you release um, anything that maybe you may even be unaware of that you're holding back um, 
going back, it's, it's almost giving me the energy of like having to do some shadow work, but the easiest route to do that is through writing. So again, um, whether it's journaling, whether it's expressing your emotions, even on everyday basis, whenever you're triggered or whenever you feel, um, that you are extremely, uh, emotional, write it down. This is going to help you release that and no longer carry uh, those emotions that you are suppressing. And you will start to experience, like I said, uh, people being more welcoming or people um, really connecting with your energy. Uh, it's almost like your spark of energy is being reignited or you're being um, your vibration, you're raising your vibration very much. And again, uh, inspiration is something that is very, very important. So what I'm hearing is for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that are like the home type, the, the home body type. Um, yes, that's normal. Um, but to do it as a way of not wanting to deal with people is, should be a red flag. It should be something that we kind of like, it's okay to experience that. Sometimes it's necessary to reconnect with ourselves. But if you've been doing it as an example, the past four years, uh, this is not normal and it's not okay because it keeps you in depressive modes or it keeps you in a cycle where you're very, very secluded. So again, uh, they're giving me four, four uh, in connection with the six of cups. So again, heart chakra, work on that, releasing that, uh, heal from that. And again, the easiest route to do that is through journaling. All right. What is the specific uh, message you want to communicate here with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus? Okay, we have number 34. So 34 is the fish. It is a direct connection with finances, money, wealth, feelings. <laughs> Not surprised here. Uh, feelings, uh, individuality. This is, um, you know, speaking directly about Feelings is something that's coming through very strongly for me right now. I'm, I'm feeling almost like overwhelmed, almost wanting to cry. Um, I think that a lot of the times, uh, especially earth signs, um, really struggle with, with being able to show vulnerability. And the reason for it is because at an early age, um, you kind of grow up too fast or you come to the realization like, you know, parents are humans too and they mess up, and sometimes uh, they're not perfect, and you are the one child that recognizes that or that sees that and that is willing to step up or to make it easier for your parents or um, to be aware of what's happening and the responsibilities, and you grow up uh, a little too soon. So it's almost like by the time you're, by the age of 30, it's like you're a person of 60 years, right? Uh not age wise, but um, experienced wise and mature wise, maturity level. Um, and a lot of the times people go to you or see you as the rock or as the person that is wise and the person that can fix everyone else's problems. But because you come off strong, uh, rarely do people check up on you. Rarely do people tell you, hey, Taurus, do you, are you doing okay? How are you feeling? How have you been doing? Like, it just never crosses their mind because you are strong, but even strong people need um, a release, right? A release of emotion, a release of expressing your feelings and what you're processing, because as an earth sign, it doesn't come natural to you to be able to, um, you know, understand I'm overwhelmed right now. I need to, you know, five minutes to ground myself. Like, it's responsibility after responsibility. So, and, and also 34 can also represent addictions. Um, and it's because you're unable to release those emotions as a way of escapism and addictions doesn't necessarily have to be just drugs and alcoholism. It can also indicate addicted to being at home, to being at a safe place, to being where you're most comfortable and the reason why it, it becomes almost second nature to you is because it's your home is your fortress, um, as any earth sign would, right? See it that way. But it is necessary for us to socialize. It is necessary for us to connect with other humans because interaction is crucial and very important. And oftentimes, like I said, it um, 
gets us out of a depressive mode when we have a tendency of really having time to ourselves to the point where we're always alone or always just within us and you know in our room or or just with your mind and your thoughts um it is crucial and it is important to bounce off energies because that's where you get inspired that's where uh you're feeling more like wanting to do more and wanting to move the energy within you um which is why they're telling me creativity is something that's been stagnant for you for a while. And creativity could affect every single aspect of your life. It could, you know, affect your love life. It could affect uh, your sexual appetite. It can affect um, de dealing with people or socializing. It can affect your finances as well, because you don't want to take on more responsibility because you're good where you're at or you're comfortable. So again, highly, highly encourage you guys to do journaling, uh, to do shadow work to help you get through that and to unblock your heart chakra as well as working with rose quartz that's also another way um putting it in your heart uh or over your, on your chest obviously <laughs> where your heart is uh while doing meditation all right now let's go to gemini sun moon rising venus let's see exactly what's going on with gemini's show me reveal to me let me to see clearly and concisely what is it that they need to what blockages they need to overcome. And... The way to overcome them. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, so what I'm hearing for you guys, uh, Geminis, I feel like the point, the time has come where it's necessary to release yourself from the past. Um, there is a, there is this feeling that is very engraved in you. And it is a feeling of having issues to do with worthiness, having issues to do with being recognized or being seen. And this has allowed you, this has, you know, it's, it's something that comes from a very early age. Um, you could have been the different one. You could have been the one that your parents just can understand. They just didn't really try to connect with you. Uh, for others of you, abandonment could have been something that was uh, triggered in early childhood. Um, for others of you, it could just be the, the feeling of not ever being understood. And people kind of glossing over that because they see you as a strong individual. They see you as a person that takes no shit because you're very vocal uh, when you feel crossed or when you feel disrespected. Um, but a lot of that defensiveness comes from wanting to be heard, wanting to be acknowledged. And I feel like you guys have gone through this process where you've been aware of certain things that are no longer working for you and the wanting to find your voice within, meaning not the one that is very bold and that speaks up and uh, that may be snarky, but the real you, Gemini, the real you, the you that is sensitive, the you that takes things extremely personal, the you that loves and cares for your family and your loved ones and you're always fighting for them or always trying the best you can to be there for them um but wanting some recognition and and that has a lot to do with the fact that that there are certain things in the past where you've allowed people to step on you or to walk all over you people that you love because it's very difficult for you to um, 
you know, once a person has gained your trust and your love, whether they break it once or twice, it's like you're forgiving because you love them and because you've allowed them in. So you have trouble walking away from, from things that no longer serve you. You stay much more too longer than you should, or you give people chance after chance and they continuously keep letting you down. And it comes down to your self-worth and what you believe you're worth and what spirit wants you to understand that you're worth. The way you view yourself is the five of pentacles. This is the feeling like something is wrong with you or like you have to change and you have to be a certain way in order for people to receive your energy, in order for people to acknowledge you or in order for people to be around you or love you. And who you really are is walking away from this habit or walking away from this mentality you come to the realization with the 10 of pentacles that the de your destiny is in your hands just because someone experienced certain type of things as an example your parents experienced certain type of things in their life and maybe there's a theme there that's going on as an example like the marriages break and so you were thinking like, I'd rather not even get married or I'd rather not open myself up to that because I just don't want to be disappointed or I just don't want to find out that my faith is the same. And what Spirit is telling you is, no, you need to understand that there is a need for you to take your power back and to understand that you deserve every single thing that you want and you desire because if you didn't want and desire that and if you weren't worthy of that, you wouldn't even understand that that's what you want. So there is a cycle that you need to completely let go of. And it starts with your self-worth. Stop putting yourself in positions that are uncomfortable. As an example, if a friend asks you for a favor, can you give me a ride? And you're struggling right now. This is just an example. You're struggling right now and you just have gas to go to work the next day. And you're embarrassed to tell them that because you love them and you care for them and you feel bad for them. So you give them the right. Like, don't put yourself in positions that is going to make it more difficult for you. You have to learn to look out for yourself right now. And the reason for this is because, not to say that your friends and your loved ones don't appreciate you, but it is about you looking out for yourself and making yourself a priority. That's how we love and nurture ourselves, by looking out for ourselves. You cannot help others if you can't help yourself. And this is something that you need to understand. For some of you guys, you're already working on this. For some of you guys, I see you guys maybe become a little bit more secluded or maybe more private. Maybe for some of you guys, you kind of released or walked away from a family dynamic that was toxic and they're still toxic and they still have things to say. But if you are on that path, know and understand that you're doing the right thing because it is important and it is crucial, like I said, to take care of yourself to take care of your energy, to take care of your priorities first before helping others. You don't have to feel responsible for other people's lives, even if you love them and they keep making the same stupid mistake as an example, blowing off their check, right? And you're over here making it day by day and they rely on you for rides or they rely on you to take them out. Every time you go out, they they never pick up the tab. They, <laughs> they expect you to be the one to pay and you're embarrassed. So, And I know this is not a Gemini energy, right? <laughs> you guys holding back. But I feel like this is a cycle that you've been going through. And like I said, if you've been already experiencing that, you're you're on the right path. You need to take care of yourself. Five and five is inner struggles. It is struggles within ourselves that we keep experiencing and keep experiencing and we keep asking God or we keep looking up and saying, why me, why me? Because you're not paying attention to what they're teaching you, what you need to grow out of or what you've already outgrown. Um, and the easiest way to do this is to do a release, um, a release spell or a spell that is primarily focusing on being able to draw in uh, more opportunities. As an example, abundance spells, anything that has to do with abundance, anything that has to do with uh, empowerment, anything that has to do with self-love. Let's see what your specific message is. 
I was going to try to do these videos shorter, um, but Spirit has a lot to say. So <laughs> you guys bear with me. Like I said, if you guys like these videos, comment below. Let me know so that I can continue doing these videos for you guys. Spirit, what is the final message here for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Final message for Gemini here. Okay. And we have number 18. You guys, this is the card of loyalty. This is friendships. This is reliability. This is alertness, helpfulness, sincerity, attachment, holding. You know, sometimes we enslave ourselves with our loyalty to people that sometimes they don't deserve it. And because we love them and we care for them. And I can totally relate. I'm an earth sign. I'm not easy to give my love, but when I do, you go above and beyond for the people you love, but understanding that you having loyalty for them does not mean that when you need to look out for yourself or protect yourself or think of yourself, you think of them first, because if they really cared for you and they really loved you, they wouldn't allow you to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. And that's what came through. So maybe being or learning to be more loyal to yourself. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer here. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is a blockage that they need to overcome? What is the remedy to that? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Answer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, one more shuffle. Here we go. All right, Cancer. Oof, okay. my lovely cancers. You guys definitely, definitely need to do cutting of cords. You guys definitely, definitely need to do a cleansing, um, whether it's a energetical uh, cleansing, Reiki, an egg cleanse. Um, you guys are carrying a lot of energy from previous relationships. And this is the thing, not to say that you jump from one relationship to another, although for some of you guys, this may ring true. Um, but when we get ourselves into a relationship and don't complete that cycle, meaning you don't end that relationship and then you go to another relationship or you get involved with someone that is half-assing it. Uh, meaning that they tell you they're not in a relationship, it's breaking up, but yet they're still dealing with them. You're bringing that energy. You're carrying that energy that that person is carrying from the other relationship or from the other connections or the other partners. And there's almost this feeling of having the fear to not be loved or not be accepted or having the fear of being alone. So for some of you guys, the tendency of going from one relationship to another could be because there is a fear of being alone. Now, for others of you, you've been alone for a very long time. And the reason why you're not able or you feel like you haven't been able to stabilize a connection or to uh, create even a relationship for some of you guys is because although you've convinced yourself that you're no longer emotionally invested in the person from the past, you're still dragging that energy. Now, what they're showing me here is almost like, like I said, for some of you guys, it's the fear of being alone. For others of you, it's settling with partners you know are not good for you. But again, the fear of being alone somehow you connect that to like forever alone because that's the first card that's the first thoughts that I got when I pulled the three and the hanged man it's like I'm forever alone and 
it's this feeling of when you get emotionally invested in someone or you get emotionally attached to someone, you start to create the scenarios where you want to rush into stabilizing the relationship or getting married or moving in together. And it's like, it doesn't move quick enough. But the reason for that is again, because there is a fear of not wanting to heal past traumas. So at this point, there's almost like this energy of like, you're pretty much pushing people away um, energetically wise, because your energy is extremely blocked. So there has to be a release. There has to be a cleansing that takes place. There is healing that needs to happen here. Uh, for a lot of you guys, stop allowing the person that you may still be dealing with, stop allowing them to continue hurting you. If you keep sacrificing yourself when it comes to relationships, if you keep settling for shit that you know you don't want, you don't want to be a side piece or you don't want to be you know, the girlfriend or boyfriend that only sees them at night. You don't want to be, um, you know, not knowing if you can think of a future. Like if that's not what you want, stop settling for that. Stop being okay with that because you're not okay with that. Do not be scared to speak up. Do not be scared to say, hey, I'm looking for something serious. I'm looking for a commitment or I'm looking for marriage. If that's not what you're looking for, then let me know right now. And they tell you like, no, I'm not looking for that. And you're like, well, that's fine. I'm not really, I'm not trying to rush anything. It's like you're convincing yourself to fit the situation. And what they're telling you here is healing needs to happen, babe. You guys need to release this energy almost like, you know, it's like carrying a sign because your energy is not only blocked, but it's, it's like, stop sacrificing yourself. Take some time to work on yourself. Take some time to sit with not being alone, but what it is to be single or what it is to, you know, find yourself again. If you're coming out of a relationship, heal. Only through healing are you able to attract a healthy, loving relationship. Not someone that is going to confuse you. Not someone that is going to play the part and sell you a dream. A cleansing, you guys. That's what you guys need. All right, spirits. What is the final message here for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. We have number 28. Now... This is a masculine energy for some of you guys. It is a general reading, but there is a masculine energy that is attached to you. Um, this first, if you're a masculine, this could have been a father figure. This could have been the person that you've seen as a father figure um, that could have been absent or could have been uh, invested in other things other than the household or the dynamic of the family itself. It could have been a person that had multiple homes. Uh, for others of you, if you're a female, this could be a masculine energy that you dealt with in the past um, that really hurt you. And you allowed them to taint you. You allowed them to almost deal with shit that you wouldn't normally deal with, but because you love them so much, you completely devoted yourself to them. You need to let go of that energy to be able to move forward, to be able to experience a loving, healthy 
relationship. All right, my lovelies. I hope this helps you. That was heavy ass energy, you guys. <clears throat> All right, now let's go to Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the blockages that they're currently experiencing? How can they overcome them? I can give us insight. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the blockage that they're experiencing right now? What is it that they need to do to overcome it? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Leo. All right. So, Leo, I feel like you guys have been going through a, a cycle where you're being pulled towards feeding or connecting or even nurturing your spiritual side. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it an awakening, but it's like you're being guided to be able to see or to be able to understand synchronizations, to be able to understand things that are not tangible. So what I mean by that is there is almost like this alignment that's happening where you are understanding that sometimes things that happen in life are not necessarily coincidences so it's like seeing angel numbers it is about synchronizations it is about you think of something or you say or you're talking about someone and then boom you bump into them and you're aware of that and you're like holy crap like something's happening where I'm able to pick up on things or I'm able to perceive certain things and that's your spiritual side. That's your intuition. By the way, Leos are naturally, if you sharpen the ability of intuition, it comes very natural to you guys. Um, and I see that. But I also see the everyday routine or the everyday mundane things in life. And that throws you off. And what they're telling you is the mundane and the spiritual come together. So what I mean by that is finances, career, money, family, health, all of these different aspects in our lives are in unison connection with one another. And if you're able to perceive and you're able to pick up and you're able to intuitive pick up on someone's energy or you're able to pick up on, um, you know, intuition inkling or something like that, then you're most definitely able to perceive and connect to be able to read people's energies or to be able to manifest more abundance, more opportunities into your life. But there is a habit of like being aware, but, but still deciding not to be aware. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It's coming across as being able, you have the potential and the probability and possibility of bringing into your life everything that you've ever wished for, whether it's relationships, whether it's a partnership, whether it's growth, whether it's, you know, more finances, whether it's stability, whether it's a home that you're trying to manifest, you're able to do all of this. And the way to do it or the easiest route to, to manifest it is to understand that the spiritual and the mundane go hand in hand. It's almost like you're choosing to separate both. And, and that's what makes it difficult. Like I said, if you're able to think of someone and then boom, they show up to your house, that means that you're very aware and you're picking up on energies. So you can do the same and use the same intuition in your career where you're working at. If they're making it difficult, you're able to pick up on certain energies where you're able to understand who likes you and you know how to play the cards right or you know how to read the room and intuitively pick up when it's your time to shine 
and just step forward and don't, you know, fear the attention or don't fear the criticism and jump into it being decisive. And you'll start to see that things start to open up, that opportunities start to show up for you. I feel that you, the blockage right now for you is refusing to understand that you're spiritual. And that could mean a multitude of different things for all of you. But understanding that you are spiritual before you're human, therefore you're having a human experience, therefore you're able to connect with the spiritual very easily and use that to your benefit to be able to manifest opportunities. I would highly encourage you guys to do um, any type of um, any type of ritual that would help or assist you with sharpening your intuition, with opening up your mind. It could be an air spell, for example, writing down uh, certain things that you want to learn to master. You know, my intuition, being able to intuitively pick up an opportunities, being able to read people's energies, being able to um, attract things to my life naturally with the power of my mind. Going outside and burning that paper and thanking the spirits and the element of air. That would definitely help you. That would definitely open up a lot of opportunities for you guys. But there is a refusing for some of you guys it's maybe fear maybe you're scared maybe you know you have potential maybe you know that you are intuitively advanced and I don't want to open the door to certain things that you know I can't close the door on maybe that's what you're thinking but what they're telling you is that you're keeping yourself from progress because you're choosing out of fear all right my lovelies Let's see what Spirit's final message is here for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Final message here for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. We have number 10. And this is about, you know, shock, weapons, aggressiveness, Suddenness, intention, harvest, but it could also indicate danger. So the danger to your detriment for your growth is the fear that holds you back, Leo. It's the fear that's holding you back. Maybe you're scared of the unknown. But understanding, like I said, the notion that you are spiritual before you are human helps you understand a little bit better that the gifts that you possess, the gifts you came into this lifetime, they're for a purpose. They're for a reason. Not only to bring more abundance and to flourish or to fully experience um, life and the beauty that life possesses and that it holds. Being more aware, being more present. Fear is the biggest thing that holds 90% of people's progress because we, we, we're creatures of habit and we're scared of change and we're scared of what we may not know. But behind that not knowing could be the life you always dreamt of, could be your true 100% happiness.
the opulence, the opportunities. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let how you were raised or how you were taught or if your parents don't believe in um, manifestations and they think that it's something bad, whatever it is that you believe in, if it's not feeding your soul and it's not helping you become a better person and be able to experience life to its fullest, then it is a detriment to your growth. And you should always fight for what is going to help you experience life to your fullest. All right, my lovelies. Ooh, heavy messages, you guys. <laughs> let, me, let me shake it off here for a bit. <clears throat> now let's go to Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that uh, Virgo currently is experiencing? What blockages revealed to me? Show me what the remedies for that. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising. Oops. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Well, of course, right? You're one of the signs that was really triggered this lunar eclipse. I see. All right. So currently you're experiencing opportunities that are coming your way, whether you're experiencing that now or you will be experiencing that. There's a feeling of accomplishment and opportunity and growth, a new beginning for you guys. Now, what they are warning you here is to not scatter those opportunities, to not take them lightly. A lot of the times when we start to progress in life, yes, it is important to be present and to fully experience the growth in that moment, but they're also telling you that it doesn't mean that you get comfortable. There is something that you have a tendency of doing. And it is when you feel comfortable, you don't push yourself uh, the way you should because you feel like this is going to be here forever. And then it doesn't happen that way. And then it almost feels like you have to go through the same like beginning process. Um, and what they're telling you is that it's time at this point in your life, it's time to be honest with yourself. And it is important and crucial for you to really, really focus in your finances, but not in the now for the future. So there is a need for balance in regards to your finances. Again, even if you feel like you're doing very well right now, um, be smart about your money, Virgo. Be extremely smart about your money because there is unnecessary investments or putting money into things or friends or family members and then not receiving that in return or not being able to receive what was promised. Give me a second, you guys, my mouth is dry. Not being able to uh, receive what they promised or like I said, being comfortable and then all of a sudden you struggle and it's like a recurring cycle. You're doing good and you're living in the moment not really thinking of the future and then boom, something happens where you have to put money out of pocket or you realize that it, you know, work starts to become a bit unstable and it's a feeling of having to redo everything all over again. So what they're telling you is be smart about your finances. I would highly encourage you guys to do, uh, especially in the month of December um, to the new year. January, I would highly encourage you guys to focus primarily on abundant spells, um, clearing out energy, a cleansing before doing any type of money working. But I would definitely encourage you guys to do the come to me money or the quick money uh, spell. This is going to help you. And it's also going to assist you in removing uh, the blockages that you're experiencing or maybe or may start to experience in regards to your finances. Now, also, uh, like I said, being extremely honest with yourself, um, it's easy to be, it's easy to be wanted to be around people when you're doing amazing. 
But then when you start to struggle, that's when you find out the friends, the true friends that are there for you, that hold it down for you. Um, stop giving a shit how people perceive you or how people take you, Virgo. Uh, stop doing for people that are not doing for you. That is something that is coming very strong for you guys. Um, this is, you know, going out of your way to help people. This is you having the tendency of picking up the tab for other people. Um, like I said, just because you're doing good doesn't mean that you're responsible for everyone else. Uh, you need to learn uh, to be more aware of people's energies and their intentions. Like I said, it's easy to want to be around someone when they're doing amazing but where the fuck are they at when you're doing, you know, when you're struggling, um, be mindful of that type of energy Virgo, because I feel like what they're showing me here, it's, it's something that you've experienced in the past, but you still don't learn. So you need to be more aware, more mindful of that. Spirit guides, what are the messages? What are the final messages here for Virgo? What is the final message you have for Virgo, sun, wind, rising, Venus? Money spells, you guys. All right. And we have 21. This is the obstacle. <laughs> um, finances is something that you need to focus on very strongly, especially if right now you've been feeling like you've been experiencing a lot of difficulty in your finances or um, like you're struggling with money. Doing a cleansing and doing a money spell, you're going to experience abundance. You're going to experience success. Um, you're going to experience more constant stability, but you got to be mindful of the warnings they're giving you, Virgo. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Libra. Okay, Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Reveal to me, show me their obstacles and the remedy for it. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys enjoy these videos, don't forget to like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What are the obstacles and the remedies to overcome those obstacles? Right. Clarity, give me insight. Reveal to me. Oh, okay. We have the Chariot card. The King of Swords. And the Karma card. The Emperor. Lovers. Page of Wands. Okay. So I see you guys really focused and really motivated for some of you guys. I'm going to be honest. I feel like there is a lot of faded events that you're going to be experiencing, Libra. For some of you guys, this is dealing with love and romance, um, especially a person that perhaps at some point in your life you felt like it was your soulmate. I see them returning or I see them colliding on your path. Um, now, the obstacle here, I feel like in the past for you guys, it's always been that you're too much in your head. You have a tendency of not being present or not living in the moment because you're constantly overthinking or overanalyzing. Um, for some of you guys, it could have been the fear of settling with the wrong person that's something that's always been reoccurring for you. It's almost like the tendency of, you know, finding someone that you completely hit it off, you romanticize the relationship. And once it gets comfortable, is there something better out there for me? And that type of energy. It's, so, it's, it's almost like always wanting to know if there's something better out there. And what Spirit is saying is that at this point, you've outgrown that cycle, Libra. It's time to get your shit together. It's time to be decisive when it comes to love and romance. And I do see you guys going into a much more mature energy when we're talking about love and romance. Again, I see a reconnection. So I don't see it so much as an obstacle. I feel like right now you're dealing with faded events. You're dealing with your destiny. 
And when we have to deal with our destiny, no matter what you do, no matter how much you fight it, no matter how many lefts and rights you, or how many lefts you make, if you need to make a right, at some point, the universe is going to push you to make that right. So what they're telling you here is stop thinking. Um, stop thinking that better opportunities are around the corner because that's not always going to be the case for you. And if there is a fated event or a situation that reconnects you with a person from the past that you considered or thought of as your soulmate, that is your soulmate. And they're giving you another goal, meaning the universe, not the person, because you may have to earn that. <laughs> but they are telling you that um, there is a reconnection because there is a maturity level on your part as well as on their part where it's going to set out or play out for you in a way that it is unquestionably destiny. So for those of you guys watching this, like I said, if there was a person where you felt like it was your soulmate, something happened, life happened, uh, took you guys towards different paths, if they bring you or if you bump into them or you reconnect with them from now all the way to January, know and understand that the universe is going to do what they have to do to let you know it's the stars, is your alignment, it's your destiny. Um it's time, like I said, and that's what came through. It's time to grow the fuck up. Um, it's time to be assertive in what it is that you want and stop being childish at this point. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's without a question. What I'm sensing is that you're going to know your undecisive ass is going to know without a doubt uh, that it's the universe telling you this is the person that's for you. So my dear Libras, if anything, I would just encourage you guys to do a cleansing bath, uh, to really let go of past energies um, in regards to yourself and your self growth. Not necessarily the other people or other people's energy, but more so uh, cleansing yourself, your mind, your body, and your spirit um, to empower you to be aligned. All right, spirits, what is the final message here for Libra, sun, moon, rising, and Venus? What is the final message for Libra, sun, moon, rising, Venus? We have number 10. And like I had mentioned, um, I believe, I'm not sure if it was Leo that got it. Um, this is the card that represents, you know, shock, something that is unexpected, can also represent aggression, suddenness. I see it more as suddenness because even though I've already told you what you can expect, um, it's still going to catch you off guard. It's still going to catch you or have this feeling of like out of nowhere, it just happened. Um, and it's again, know and understand that, that that's kind of what happens when, um, our fate is taking center stage right now. And I feel that that's definitely what's happening for you guys. So um, positive reading. Um, fated events. Could be scary, but exciting. <laughs> All right, now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see. What are the current blockages of Scorpio and how do we overcome them? Spirit, give us clarity, give us insight. Show me, reveal to me. Oh, 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 okay. We have two of cups, karma, okay. Faded connection or relationship here. Scorpio, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Huh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Not, uh, obviously this is not negative whatsoever. Uh, Scorpio, obviously you're one of the signs that is going to have major a uh, transformational type of energy because of the lunar eclipse we just experienced in Taurus. Um, 
So what they're showing me here is for a lot of you guys experiencing what stability is. Um, for some of you guys, it could have been experiencing a lot of difficulties when it comes to relationships or not being able to solidify them or coming out of very toxic type of relationships. Um, but moving forward, what I see for you guys is connecting with what is your destiny, connecting to your life partner. That's if you are not already with them. Uh, this is talking to me about a karmic cycle. Obviously, like I said, the lunar eclipse we just experienced is bringing to you the opportunity to meet the person you're going to marry, uh, to meet, like I said, your lifetime partner. Now, with the four of pentacles here and the hanged man, it is almost like what they're showing me is the fear of being happy. Now that sounds crazy, right? <laughs> it's like, it's kind of like when I ask uh, clients when I'm doing a business reading, um, oftentimes when I ask someone if they fear to be successful or if they feel, uh, feel not feel, sorry, if they fear success or being happy, everyone's normal reaction is like, of course not, right? Why would I fear that? But when you've never really experienced a certain type of experience that you've always dreamt of or you always, you know, fantasized about or always hoped for, when that moment comes, when that opportunity presents itself, a lot of the times we self-sabotage. We question it. Is it too good to be true? Is it really happening? Is it and by us overthinking and overanalyzing, we're starting to create resistance. And it's a way of our, you know, mind to create these self-limiting beliefs and for it to make sense. And then when it starts to go to shit, we're like, oh, I knew this was going to happen. But in reality, we got to take self-responsibility. Did it happen out of nowhere or is it that you've created that because your constant questioning or your constant uh, defensiveness or whatever it may be? So what they're showing me here is having the need to really take it in. And I'm going to be honest with you, Scorpio, if you're already with your partner, the person that you're destined to be with, meaning you're married or already in a committed relationship, do not be stupid and go sacrificing your happiness because out of a way of like self-sabotaging your happiness, because I see you guys really taking pride or being happy where you're at, but then with the hanged man, it is routine or it is the feeling of, you know, like you start to create all of these things in your mind. And it's because of the habit that you have or the tendency that you have of experiencing only bad that when good starts to unfold, you question it. And this is something you've done in the past on multiple occasions or multiple relationships. So what spirit is telling you is be very careful to not jeopardize your stability and your happiness out of something stupid or temporary. And I don't mean stepping out of the relationship or nothing like that. What I'm seeing is again, a defensive mechanism. And if the person is a healthy, loving partner, you know, when they hear the alarm sound off, they're going to be like, I'm not dealing with this shit. So Again, be mindful of that. I feel like you guys have the potential to really experience happiness. Um, but you sometimes you guys can be your worst enemies. What is the final message here for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Final message for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. We have number 18. That's the loyalty card, you guys. So... Yeah, if happiness is what you wanted, it is at your fingertips, but do not fuck it up. If you've always wanted commitment, marriage, you know, a loving partner, 
you will have that. But remember to keep your worst enemy, meaning you, in line, in check. Don't, you know, self-sabotage. Don't go on this cycle that you've been experiencing um, for a while now. Be present. Be, uh, you know, thankful. Gratitude is the way to happiness and abundance. The more grateful we are of the things that we have and that we start to experience, the more the universe gives give, gives back to us. Um, so I know that that could be extremely difficult. <clears throat> My advice for you guys to do um, definitely, definitely to do a healing spell, um, to do a release and not going to lie, for some of you guys, I would highly encourage you guys to uh, do a uh, self-love spell. Uh, a lot of our defensiveness, a lot of our self-defense mechanisms uh, come from childhood, as you guys know. And a lot of it is because we, you know, created or not us, but they you know, experience and life put us on this defensive mode where we're on survival mode and survival mode while being in a very abundant or happy cycle in your life can be a detriment to that. Because like I said, if this is a constant thing that you've always experienced, right? The, the notion of self self, even if you're not aware of it, um, could really jeopardize your happiness. So again, I would highly encourage you guys to uh, do a self healing love spell um, or to work on any type of self healing uh, spell that would help you uh, to release, but also to help you really be in the vibration and in the present vibration of love and unconditional love. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what your obstacles are. What is the remedy for them? Spirits, give us insight, give us clarity. Give us insight, give us clarity. All right, Sagittarius, what they're showing me here is you're going into this cycle in your life right now where you're going to start to experience more opportunities, more uh, advancement. For a lot of you guys, this could be like getting higher positions or getting raises, uh, being able to have more opportunities for those of you guys that run your own business, new ideas, creative ideas that are going to bring to you much more clientele, much more abundance. Now. What they are showing me here for the majority of you guys, I would highly encourage you guys to uh, do a cutting of cords. And the reason for that is you do have the six of pentacles here, which speaks about in the past, um, perhaps taking, perhaps, you know, I don't necessarily like this feeling, but it's almost like taking advantage of certain situations or certain people around you that wanted to help you or that have helped you in the past. Um, it's almost like a feeling of one upping them. Um, and that's not necessarily a good energy. Why? Because the chariot is moving forward, taking action. It is taking advantage of that situation and the five of cups having to deal with the consequences of that. So it could be you being put in a position where someone asks you for a favor, um, and there is some type of disappointment there. So I would encourage you guys, like I said, to do a cutting of cords. Um, and also, um, I would highly encourage you guys to be able to do some type of charitable work, um, whether it's to be more mindful of the people that are out there asking for money or asking for, uh, for food, um, 
try the best you can not to be so judgmental right now, Sagittarius, because though I feel like you're going into a very blessed energy or cycle in your life, um, you're also going to be put to the test. I see a lot of red here with the page of wands and the two of wands, which indicates um, very powerful type of energy, but this can also indicate almost like being blessed or experiencing more opportunities, but also being tested, meaning the universe, uh, trying to, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say test you, but trying to see how much more you can grow. Are you able to take on these opportunities? Are you willing to make the best of it? Or are you going to feel or be in a position or in an energy where you feel entitled and looking down on people? Um, and should you take that route, uh, the universe will put you in your place really quick. And those opportunities can and will uh, disappear, uh, leaving you in a position of feeling with regret or feeling like you missed opportunities. So again, be grateful, uh, do charitable work, um, could be as simplistic as if you go to a gas station and someone is asking for money uh, and you have it, don't sit there and be like, oh, if I give it to them, they're going to, you know, go buy booze or whatever. Like, that's not your business. What you want to do is put out to the universe abundant energy so that it can be returned to you, not through that person, obviously, but um, being grateful and counting your blessings. Because I'm not going to lie, Sagittarius. I see, I'm seeing, uh, almost sensing the energy of like being entitled. And I know you're one of the signs that has really struggled in the past or have gone through a lot of lessons. Um, and it's easy for us to forget those lessons when we start to do good and you want to be able to do good by us being good. We're able to bless others. So just remember that. All right. What is the final message here for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? We have number 32. This is all about the psyche. This is your thoughts, your intuition, sensitivity, and sensitive whims. So again, if you're being drawn and pulled towards helping someone or um, blessing them, definitely do it and pay attention to that because I feel like right now, karmatically, um, like the universe is really picking up on your energy. Um, it is important and crucial for us to, and of course, not just because I'm telling you, but do it because it comes out of your heart. Uh, that's where the authenticity comes from, the being genuine. Um, this is all about inner working. So again, um, if you feel like you may be experiencing that a bit of entitlement or feeling like uh, you're you know, on top of the world right now, let me bring you down a little bit and tell you to do any type of spell work that would really help you with uh, with reflection, uh, with connecting with your sensitive nature or creating uh, spells, any type of spell work that has to do with creativity and feeding your creativity or empowering that. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn. Spirit guides, give us a clear indication of the obstacles that they're currently going through. I'm going to put it back in here. I don't feel strong connection. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, show me their blockages and the remedy for them. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, blockages, the remedy for them. Okay, here we go. We have the Knight of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles, and the High Priest, the Wheel of Fortune, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Hanged Man. All right, Capricorn, you've gotten to a point in your life where sacrificing yourself is no longer working for you. This is something that you need to grow out of. This is an energy of having to you've outgrown this energy and i feel like it's still in your vibration and what spirit is saying is you're gonna have a very hard and difficult time if you continue to do this so when i say sacrificing yourself i mean in every single aspect of your life as an example at work 
If you have a tendency of picking up or doing too much because others are lagging or because others are just lazy, um, if in the past this was something that helped you stand out or helped you uh, really be acknowledged by superiors or people that are higher than you, um, this is actually going to backfire moving forward. They're going to see you as a pushover. They're going to see you as a doormat and you don't want that. Um, so again, it is time to start thinking of yourself and learning to put yourself first and being vicious in regards to going after what you want, whether it's relationships, partnerships, finances, career. It is about being selfish. So this is a Capricorn selfish era. <laughs> um, and the reason, like I said, in the past, you have this recurring cycle of sacrificing yourself, sacrificing your happiness, maybe even sacrificing for your family, loved ones, people that rely or expect a lot from you. And like I said, as the example uh, that I said of work, in every other aspect of your life, if you continue to do that, it's going to backfire very quick because Saturn's energy is telling you, you've outgrown the cycle. You need to be more disciplined with yourself and what, what you're wanting to accomplish or what you're wanting to achieve. Now, uh, Knight of Cups and Ten of Pentacles does indicate st stabilization for a lot of you guys going into a cycle of Fina not financial, um, although financial, yes, because I do see pentacles here, but primarily what I was trying to say is um, going into a cycle, finding emotional stability is something that is highlighted here very strongly for you guys. Um, maybe even some of you guys kind of pulling away or maybe pulled away in a, a while um, from the notion of marriage or commitment, um, wanting to be, you know, uh, independent or independent in your way of thinking. But this is something that is greatly important to you, Capricorn. And what they're telling you here is, again, stop sacrificing yourself. Stop, um, you know, wanting or desiring things because you feel like people, like an example, people always knew you wanted to get married. And then you go the other route where you're not wanting marriage. You're not wanting commitment. You want to be uh, single forever. Um or, you know, the bachelor, <laughs> the bachelorette. Um, but deep down, you know that you want that commitment. So be okay with that and sit well with that. Meaning if they ask you, why aren't you married? I haven't found the person that would want or what I haven't found the person that I'm willing to give up my freedom for. Don't sit there and say, because I'm not looking to get married, because you and I both know from what I'm seeing here that you are trying to do that. Um, so you don't want to be sending different different vibrations to the universe of what you really want. It is, like I said, what they're saying is be vicious about what you want, be unapologetic about it. Now, for others of you, what they are showing me here is your luck is about to change Capricorn when we're talking about money, when we're talking about what you consider stability. And again, it comes through the stop sacrificing of yourself or no longer playing nice no longer making others comfortable. It's time to make Capricorn happy. And by making yourself happy and putting yourself first, you're able to achieve a lot of success, Capricorn. Um, my advice would be to definitely do yourself a cleansing. You want to cleanse yourself and remove any negative energies, but you also want to remove the negative pattern habit that you have of being a bit negative, being um a bit pessimistic. Uh, like I said, it is about being empowered and you want to start off the year strong. So definitely do yourself a cleansing Capricorn and expect the best because your luck is about to change. Spirit, what are the final messages here for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. And we have 32 again. 32 is, like I said, all about the psyche. This is your thoughts, your intuition. This is also being able to manifest through your thoughts. So visualization, Capricorn, visualizations, um, guided meditations at night or any type of working that you're doing, make sure to do it at night. It's really going to help you empower your work, your spells, uh, empower your psyche as well. And meditating at night, you may be able to intuitively pick up um, or have sensitivity whims. Uh, this is like reflections. This is aha moments. 
um, that may uh, assist you or help you in the achievements that you're trying to make. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. What are the obstacles that they're currently going through and what are the remedies for them? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Oh, okay, we have a card that flipped. Seven of Swords. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. King of Wands. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Interesting. All right, Aquarius, what they're showing me here is you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being honest with yourself in regards to a situation or a connection with someone that could have been a Scorpio for others of you. It could have been a fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius type of energy. There is a conclusion or an ending that came or that you experienced. There is this disregard for the learning experience or what you had to go through. Um, for some of you guys, this could be that you're just holding on to someone from the past. Um, and that's what keeps you, that's what keeps you binded. Not gonna lie. For some of you guys. For some of you guys, this could have been like you experience a loss, like a physical loss. Um, a loved one could have passed away. There is, with the Seven of Swords, there is a dishonesty or not being completely honest with yourself about the situation. So for some of you guys, it could have been like romanticizing a connection, a relationship, a connection, someone that you cared for greatly. Um, and it's almost like it came to an end, but you're still holding on to the romanticized part about it. And that's what really has you tied to the past. And what they're showing me here is that there is a need to move on from this. There is energetically, we're talking about energies here. We're not talking about like physically. Uh, I feel like there is something that you keep going to the past about that you haven't fully healed from or you haven't fully released yourself from. And it is necessary at this point. You have the six of swords, um, the knight of swords, cutting cords. So I would highly, highly encourage you guys to do a cutting of cords especially for those of you guys that have experienced almost like um, non-existent love life. The reason for it is because you're still energetically tied to this person. Even if, as an ex example, even if the person you loved and, you know, cared for greatly moved on, passed on. Um, there was a physical death for some of you guys. And Though for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that did lose someone, um, it's been it's been years, and it's okay to move on. And I know that sometimes that's very difficult to understand because we feel like our loyalty is to them, but they would not want you to be holding on to the past. You're here, you're present. You need to live. You need to experience. Now, if this wasn't a physical uh, loss and it was a metaphorical or relationship ending, um, you need to stop holding on to that. And even if you're not aware of it, maybe for some of you guys, it's like, you know, I've moved on. I, you know, I'm no longer, you know, dealing with that person or whatever the situation is. You've convinced yourself that you've moved on. But with the Knight of Swords here and the Two of Swords, you're refusing to acknowledge that the pain and the hurt of that loss, you're still carrying. So it's still greatly impacting your energy. Cutting of cords is what comes to mind as soon as I pull these cards out. It's time to move on. And the only way to do that is through a cutting of cords because through a cutting of cords, we're also not just ridding ourselves and removing negative energy, but we're also releasing 
anything that we've outgrown or that it is time for us to move on, but that because of that attachment, it keeps us there. It keeps us not being able to move or to propel moving forward. So again, cutting of cords is something that I would highly encourage you guys to do at this point. Now let's see what your final messages are here. Spirit, what is the final messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Final message for Aquarius. Final message for Aquarius. All right. We have the 10 again. This one has came out for a couple of a couple of you signs. This is, you know, the danger, the the pain, the the injury that you continue to experience. Um it is the it is the 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 it, it's like still like you're not allowing your wound to heal because you keep picking at it. You keep reminiscing or you keep looking to the past or you keep romanticizing that connection. And that what keeps you from being able to move forward. That's what keeps you feeling stuck, feeling restricted, feeling like you haven't moved on or feeling like you haven't stabilized. Or for some of you guys, you haven't even dated anyone after this loss. For some of you guys, it's been five years. For others of you, it's been seven years. And though, yes, it takes a while for us to heal, staying and choosing to remain in that I'm healing energy is just comfortability after a while. And it is a detriment and it greatly impacts uh, your growth and you being able to move forward. So again, it's time to completely cut, literally cut the cords. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Pisces, last but never least, my lovely Pisces. Okay, I'm going to put it back in. All right, let's see. What are the blockages of Pisces? What are the blockages that Pisces is currently experiencing? What are the remedies for them? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising Venus. I see sun when raising Venus, the blockages that they're currently experiencing and the remedies for it. All right, here we go. Pisces, eight of wands, star card, three of swords, 10 of cups, six of wands, seven of wands. Protect your energy, Pisces. I see growth, advancement, being able to see light at the end of the tunnel. For some of you guys, this is um, alignment. It's There's almost like this uh, renovation of energy, regeneration of energy that you're currently experiencing. For some of you guys coming out of heartbreak, uh, coming out of um, pain, coming out of, for some of you guys, this could have been coming out of a very difficult, toxic relationship. Um, and finally being able to see the reasoning behind it, the purpose for it. And ultimately the purpose is you settle for what you think you deserve Pisces. I feel like there's not much that's needed to be done right now for you guys um, in regards to anything that can help you propel into the future. I feel like you guys are already on that path. Um, there is now for those of you guys that are currently experiencing a lot of trauma in a relationship or in a partnership. The reason for this is because they it almost feels like they are doing things on purpose and they really are but the reason for it is because the spirit is trying to show you the way they're trying to show you you know you don't deserve this you know you don't deserve to be mistreated you know you don't deserve to be betrayed you offer genuine authentic love you nurture and you pour yourself into relationships, literally what the star represents. And through that, they choose to betray or let you down. 
when are you going to realize that you deserve so much more? And like I said, for some of you guys, this is an energy that you've already overcame. You're already experiencing some type of some type of healing, some type of renovation of energy. For some of you guys, this is being re-inspired. Love may have entered your life. Um, for others of you, you will be experiencing this in the coming um the coming year. Uh, from now all the way to January, opportunities for love and for stabilization and for healing is coming through. But again, moving forward, Pisces, it is crucial and very important not to settle for anything less than what you deserve. Seven of Wands is like, take me for who the fuck I am. And if you don't, I'm no longer molding myself. I'm no longer making myself to what you want. I think Pisces you know, because of, because of your ruling planet, you have a tendency of doing that. You guys have a tendency of reinventing yourself, which is a good thing. The bad thing is re renovating, um, reinventing yourself because of the partner that you're with or because of the partner you're dealing with. Um, and that's not necessarily a good thing because it's easy for you guys to forget who you are and you lose yourself in relationships. And what spirit is showing me here is that you guys are going into an era, into a cycle where emotional stability is coming through for you. The feeling of achievement or the feeling of being empowered, being loved. This is your confidence boosting. This is um, people around you loving you and supporting you and showing you how great you are. And with the seven of wands, it is no longer allowing people to hurt you, no longer allowing people to use the beauty in you as a weakness, this is you turning your weakness into empowerment. This is you standing up for yourself and, and saying, you know what? I deserve respect. And if you can't give me that respect, there's the fucking door. It is like no longer allowing people to take advantage of your kind heart, your kind soul. This could even be with friends. You'll start to notice that friends start to fall away or you're outgrowing these connections. And the reason for it is because the more love you pour into yourself, the more people will applaud you or will feel uncomfortable, especially if you're if they're not used to seeing you take the spotlight or they're not used to you uh, being the one to take center stage. And I see you guys working on yourself. So for some of you guys, it's working out. Some of you guys is dyeing your hair a different color. For others, of it's reinventing. That's the energy I'm sensing. So again, those that are being uncomfortable because you are being more of your authentic self, then let them falter, let them fall away. You don't need them. If this is a relationship and it's been nothing but struggle and it's been nothing but making you feel less than what you deserve, it's time to walk away from that Pisces. And when you do, that's if you've not already walked away from that. But be ready, be ready because there is emotional happiness and emotional stability coming through for you. All right, my lovelies. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie, you guys. I would highly encourage you guys to do a glamour spell. Um, Not necessarily because you're not beautiful. Obviously, you're beautiful. Glamour spells are to be able to attract, to be able to heighten, to be able to raise our sexual energy, to bring out the best in us. But I would encourage you guys to do glamour spell for yourself so that you can really, really start to see how beautiful you are, Pisces, how amazing you are. So that you can see the opportunities that are out there and stop allowing people that don't deserve you to mistreat you and to make you feel less and to belittle you because only through doing that are they able to make themselves feel better. And your final message here is 27. Beautiful energy, you guys. <laughs> this is communication. This is information. This is a message coming through. This could be also news, information that is being related to you that is in some shape, way, or form connected to love or new love. So again, stop putting up with shit that is unnecessary because there are better things out there for you and you will know about it. 
glamour spell Pisces so that you can fully see not for others, but for you so that you can really see the beauty that you possess in every single aspect of yourself, my lovelies. All right, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. I hope they help you. I hope they assist you. I hope they give you clarity. It was a pleasure spending time with you guys and I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye-bye.